people good day welcome back all right so today we're going to be talking about creating slices using the make function which is a built-in function that golam provides so far we've been making slices from array an existing array but that is kind of limiting if you think about it what if you were to read in a thousand numbers and you didn't know it at the time because you're going to run your program prompt the users for a value of how many numbers should be read in read in and just making a guess that you know it might be a thousand or five hundred either you're going to waste space by making too big an array and then slicing it or you're not going to ever create a big enough array and therefore slice so instead we're going to learn how to make slices at runtime using golang's built-in make function said so we're going to be talking about um, creating slices dynamically which is basically a runtime and so what i did as you can see in my console here. I basically copied um, the code directory we were working on previously and started my editor. So this is exactly the code we ended the previous section with. And I want to continue from here. So to recap, what we have done is created an array of a certain length, um, have go length, calculate that length for us, and it just so happened to be 10. And we've been slicing it and dicing it and creating slices from this array. And one of the things we noticed um, go run a main is that when you have a slice um, regardless of what is pointing to an array in terms of the length into that array or the underlying array let's just say regardless of what the underlying array um, is pointing to the type for those slices seems to be um, is the same right it's just empty square bracket and the type and to drive this home a bit further I'm going to make another array I'm going to call um, nums2 and I'm going to make um, some changes to it. Uh, I'm going to put some other things in there um, and uh, what I want to show is that with a different length array which we already know that our, a different length array um, the two things are not the same um, but what I want to do is something else. What I want to do is create so I'm going to remove Let's remove all this stuff. Uh, so let's remove um, the capacity and that sort of thing we understand and know already. So let me remove this. Um, I'm going to delete this. And what I want to show um, is how I'm going to assign to one of these slice variables. So let's reuse slice. Um, so let's reuse slice s2 for example. So notice how um, I was using slice s2. And I'm going to make it even simpler. Yeah. So s0 was a slice into that array. So s0 was into this, a slice into the nums array. And we know it was simply this, right? That was s0. I'm going to print it out and then now I'm going to store in S0 nums2 and it slice into that. Okay, uh, let's do 8, whatever. And I'm going to print this out again. Um, let's print out some additional things. So I'm going to do length, um, percent %V, capacity, percent %V, and then here I'm going to, of course, um, length of S0 and then cap of S0 and so alright so what did I do well I used in my second array I sliced it and saved it in um, so we don't need this I sliced my first array stored in S0 then we're using that same variable which is just square bracket int I was able to slice an ar a different array and point and this really gets to the fact that it slices a value and it has these properties and the properties points to the underlying array so it doesn't really matter if the underlying arrays are different so even though I created S0 when I sliced S um, nums I can still assign something from a totally different array and we know it's how S1 and S2 are, are different as you will see here when I run this again and you can see here um, that um, my S is being able to point into those two different arrays even the arrays themselves are very different 
uh, we know the areas are different because we can do FMT that print len um, well printf is what we want to do and we can do percent v pong v back, um, backslash n and I can do nums and then I want to duplicate this and do nums2 okay and once that's saved I can print this out and we can see here that the, the t this is area of 10 integers this is area of 11 but my slice doesn't care about the underlining size of the array all it cares about is the type is slices it's an area of int and it could point into that right now still what we're doing is we're actually defining our arrays at compile time so go knows that how the length of these arrays are different i know this because i can if i try to do this let's say i have a function called func foo um let's call it print array print array and i say that i'm gonna call it um a is an array of 10 for example of int and i decide to print it you know i'm gonna do something with it but i decide to call you know um, print array with um, nums and then print array with nums2 you'll see that so i'll get an array even before i save um, i compile or anything but you know this is static analysis but i'll get it even if i try to compile it that tells me that hey i expect an array of 10 and i went over this already for an array the, the size is part of the type and so it knows that oh, this is different on the other hand if i said um i what I'm accepting instead is a slice of int, and then now this is an array, but I can slice it by doing this, and so I've created a slice to the entire array as we know we can do here. So now I've created a slice to the entire array, and now I could pass that to my print array method, um, no problem. Well, what I really want to talk about though is still we're kind of creating, and so this is a value that's going to get a copy of that, right? And um, what, we're, what I want to talk about is how to create slices, creating slices at runtime or dynamically, if you want, you like. And so we know that the type of a slice, a slice looks like this var s open square bracket int. That's a slice. We know that. And of course, we can try and print out, uh, let's call this as zero, since we don't have to change anything there, really. And we can. We can print that out. Um, we don't have these arrays to print anymore. Anyway, um, so why don't I? Um, so now when we run this, we see that it says, yes, I have a slice as zero and it's nil. Now remember, why is it nil? It's because I created it, I simply created a variable as zero, but I didn't initialize it with anything. So go lang initialize it. With nil. Remember that each type um, variable uh, type in Go has a default um, value, and so for a boolean, if I create a boolean and just print out, it's going to be false. A empty a string is going to be an empty string, and any one of the numeric type like you know integer, um, float, um, complex, its default value is going to be zero, right? The numeric ones, and for pointer types, it's like nil. So basically, a, a null pointer. So even though a slice is not a um, a pointer per se it behaves that way in, in in a sense and hence its value is nil because it doesn't point to anything those that data structure for a slice that represents the length of the array the arrays point to and the capacity those are th that data structure doesn't exist okay um, and so that's why we're seeing that oh, this is the type but the value of it is nil and of course notice that um, taking the length and capacity of nil, um, go lang doesn't barf on that, like, oh, you might have a lang certain languages like C or something, you know, might complain if you pass them nil or null values. But if you don't know those languages, don't worry. Um, but so how do you then create a slice dynamically? Well, we don't actually have an array. And remember, for a slice to have a valid value, it needs to point to some array. So essentially, what we can do is say S0 is equals to make. And make is a built-in function that we get from Golang. And what it does is construct other things. And we're not going to go into all the things you can construct. We're going to focus now on constructing slices. And so what you want to do is start by telling it the type of thing you want it to construct. 
and we want you to construct a slice. So that's why we say um, a slice of int. We could say a slice of string, a slice of, you know, um, you know, bytes, whatever. Um, any t valid type you have, you can do a slice of. And later on, when we create our own types, you can do slices of them too. So in this case, we want slice of int and the size of, our, of it. And so we're going to put five. And now, um, once we save that and we run, you're going to see that there it is. Our slice have a length of five, a capacity of five. What make did was allocated an array without a name, unlike when we had name array, without a name, and then point our slice to that. And of course, we are not seeing or have, don't have access to that underlying array, but it's there because we know top slices always point to an array. And now we can operate on that underlying anonymous array that we don't have access to through the slice. Now, there's one other thing you can do. And if you notice that um, when we say make a slice of length five, the capacity was also five. What if we want a slice that have a certain length but a different capacity like we have been used to where we have a slice here with one length and the capacity is something else. So we can do that too. We can say make that underlying array eight but I only want the slice to point to the first five elements. And so there you see we can do the same thing where we have a length of five and the um, capacity is eight. And of course, they mean that we can also re-slice the same array. So for example, if I wanted to, I can say I have S1 is equals, I'm gonna take the shortcut way of defining something, um, is, you know, S0, let's re-slice it from the beginning to the capacity, other capacity of S0. And if we were to print this out, we'll see that the length for this guy should be for S1, should be eight and eight because we're doing from the beginning of that underlining array to the length of it, the full capacity. And so if we print this out, um, we shall see, all right? And so the length is eight and the capacity is eight. And so now we see all those values. And of course, since they both point, both slides S0 and S1 are pointing to the same exact array, well, um, we can, of course, you know, modify the, the underlying array through the slices. So for example, I can say S1 of five is equals to 17 and S1 of three is equals to 91, for example. And then now if I print out back um, the two slices, um, I should see that how uh, um, the values should be reflected. Okay, let me wait till that's safe. And there you go, right? 91 and 17, okay? So nothing really changed. The only thing new here is that we are able to create our underlying array dynamically or at runtime using um, this make function. They may be thinking, well, why would I want to do that? Well, imagine that how uh, you created, um, you're gonna create, um, collect um, some, you know, age range or test scores from the user. And you don't know how many test scores they wanna enter. So you're gonna have var test scores is a uh, slice of int, right? Um, or maybe floats, for example, for 32, um, depending on which test score is. But let's go with int as the test score. And so then you're gonna probably prompt the user the user for the number of test scores, right? To enter the number of test scores. SEOR scores. And then once they enter it, now you can say, oh, now I know how many test scores I, I am saying. Let's say we had um, var count equals 20 that the user enter. Let's just pr pretend that we had that. So now I can say test scores is equals to make my slice of int and make it to hold 20 um, test scores. And now I can go ahead and then prompt the user for each individual test score and, you know, put it in, all right? Now, uh, you can do this in a loop, but we didn't really cover looping yet, so that's why I'm doing it this way. And of course, once I do that, then I can, you know, um, print it out or do some calculation um, with the test scores. Okay, 
And so now you can see the advantage of being able to create slices at runtime because it allows you to calculate how long you want them to be and so on. In the next video, we're going to see that how you can grow slices and you can copy them. Um, and so we'll get into that later on though in the next video. But here, the key point in this video is how to make slices at runtime or dynamically. And, you know, all code still compiles and of course runs. Um, you know, uh, I can take this, cut this, push that in there, and then I'll call this A and A and A and A. And, you know, um, if I want to reuse my function here, print array, you can print array of slice zero, print array of slice one. And I get all that benefit without having to type this name over and over again. So, um, bam. of course, I don't get a nice printout to say which one is being printed or whatever, but um, it still works as you can see. Um, still print out um, my, my, my test scores or whatever. All right, so I, I don't want to make this video too long. I just really want to um, show you creating sizes dynamically, and I, I hopefully, you've seen slowly that how we, like I said before, we have all the benefits with, of an array with a slice, but then um, even more capabilities. Not only is it more efficient in terms of if you pass it to a function, but we're gonna see that it's really, really nice when you think of you can grow it and append to it and so on. So just overall, much better to just use a slice. If you're ever thinking about using an array, just go ahead and just use a slice anyway. It gives you all the same benefits with none of the downsides. And so um, that's the key takeaway here. All right, take care. See you in the next video. Post if you have questions or comments or anything you want to add. And I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe, spread the word, and thanks for your support. Bye.